I'm Todd Danko. I am the principal investigator for Team Trooper. So this is Leo, our Atlas robot. It's the upgraded version of the Atlas robot. It's been upgraded since the robot that we used in the DRC trials in December of 2013. A major difference is actually just about everything you see from the knees upward with the exception of the sensor head up here. Um, he is almost a fully hydraulic robot like we had for the DRC trials. Um, now, additionally, we have an electric forearm. They add an extra degree of freedom, so we have a seven degree of freedom arm, which greatly improves the reachable workspace of the, the robot over the six degree of freedom fully hydraulic arms that we had in the trials. We've put a lot of work into developing the, the foundational capabilities of the trooper system. Um, so the trooper system is really designed to enable a collaboration between the robot and the human, um, where the human has the ability to provide the higher level reasoning, understand what sort of missions need to be accomplished, and communicating that at the behavior level with the robot for execution. And then the robot um, perceives the environment, recognizes certain salient features, uh, models that, and then uh, generates and executes low level plans to, to produce actions that, that make those behaviors a reality that the human may have guided it through. Our strategy is to not fall. Uh, this robot, um, I think there is a very high likelihood that it would break if it fell. And so the best strategy that we have is to avoid that. Um, we have not attempted to, to try to get the, uh, the upgraded Atlas off the ground just for the sake of the amount of risk involved in damaging it and what that would do to um, the short time we have left in our plans. Now, that being said, we are putting a lot of emphasis on not falling. Um, and so hopefully that pays off by us not falling. In the ideal world, we would be able to complete all of these tasks autonomously. Um, I don't think that our robot will be doing that. We like to ensure that we are performing tasks that, um, that are deemed to be safe. And so even if it was fully autonomous, there would always be this oversight by the operator to ensure that things were progressing successfully. For the DARPA Robotics Challenge, uh, there has been somewhat of an emphasis to design tasks that reflect the types of things that we would have a human do in a disaster situation. And so a robot with a human form factor sort of mimics the capabilities that a human first responder would have. I think that the control systems that we're designing, uh, well, we've tailored them specifically for use on an Atlas robot, which happens to be a humanoid. We're making sure that we are designing them in such a way that we can apply them to a wide variety of different systems, including the types of systems that you can imagine us wanting to uh, be using in the future, um, such as underwater or space robotic systems. I think it'll eventually be possible to get through all of the tasks in 60 minutes but I will be surprised if, if, um, if many teams are able to accomplish that at the finals.